attendees, I'm one like John, going proclaiming that the one who comes after me will do much better than I. So it is my pleasure, my privilege, to be the proclaimer. I'm not an introducer, I'm a proclaimer. I proclaim to you that all that you read on the paper about the speaker is true. I am not going to enumerate or appeal to you read all of the things that she has accomplished because she here is in the person. I will verify, I will certify, I will affirm that this is she. She is the one who is going to speak. So you need not hear much from me. You need to hear more from her. So it is an honor now, to be honored, past tense of a verb, come on, I tell you, I don't believe you can use an adverb, an honorable, an adjective, the honorable Judge Vanetta Perkins, this is she, please stay and listen to hear what she has to say.
but it don't seem like that's gonna work to you. Oh, I give God praise. Y'all, y'all should do whether you're anointed. God bless you. I don't know what the Lord has delivered you from. I don't know where you've been through, but don't you ever stop raising your voice. Don't you ever stop singing. Don't you change yourself. Don't try to change it. Don't try to fix it for people. You stay authentic and stay who you are, brother, because you are anointed from God. Yes, all right, all right. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I promise ain't nobody you gotta change for. Cause don't nobody know your story but you and don't nobody know my story but me. And it was nobody, 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 nobody but Jesus. Oh yes, that's the only thing I needed. Oh yes, greetings. Greetings to everyone, greetings to you. It's an omen on my glasses, y'all. You got me all turned around, think I can see. Then you get back in yourself and realize you can't. <laughs> nobody, y'all. It was nobody. It was nobody, nobody, nobody. Don't let people in these positions and places fool you and think they got their by themselves. They are lying. They are lying. It ain't nobody but Jesus. Don't nobody deserve to be there. But it was his goodness and mercy and his supernatural grace. And the same grace you give extended to others. Don't be like the ones that God blessed that turn away and act like he didn't do nothing for you. Turn around and give the same thing to somebody. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh yes, oh yes, I'm trying to get myself together. Greetings to everyone. It's an honor to be here today. To the pastor, who I love, dear. <laughs> no, he says I had a Jericho. Y'all don't remember me with that Jericho. And when I act like this way at the beginning, that Jericho started it all off. From the interdenominational choir in Tennessee. At Mount Zion Church and, and uh, Morning Star and Ebenezer for rehearsal. When I was running around from person to person in the choir. Amen, amen. I just thank God, y'all, it's an honor for me to be here, it's an honor for me to stand among you in a position of leadership. Because, uh, I know I ain't gonna stay to this paper, I keep trying. Every time I get up to speak, I promise I try to stay to the paper. But my heart gets full, and fortunately I'm in Selma, so I had a freedom to be myself. It is, but I have to give honor to you. Miss Johnson, after St. Johnson, please stand, ma'am. Let me tell y'all, everybody, applaud her. Cheer for her. Let me explain to you, and I think I heard, I saw Collins the third say that some of these young people were from Ebenezer. There is no way that I would have been able to stand in front of a jury, or I would have been able to stand in front of you today, if it had not been for Alpha Stan Johnson. This didn't happen at Selma High, this happened at Ebenezer. We were up doing God's trombone play, plays and, and memorizing things in the Easter programs. We had to stand up and learn how to speak. She said, you're gonna be in front of great people one day. Clearly didn't see that. But here I stand in front of great people. And I'm equipped and fit to function and able to speak because of the legacy that you have given it because of the training that I got at your feet. Mr. Johnson, stand up. Mr. Charles Johnson, I'm gonna stand, but I just wanna acknowledge you all um, and just say thank you for the work that you all have done. You, there's so many generations of us that have come up under you all's feet. And the other leaders, I can go all around the room because everybody in this room, half of you raised me. And I wouldn't be here without any of you. My family, Mayor Perkins, Judge Petaway, Lord Judge Petaway, <laughs> Let me tell y'all something about Judge Petaway. I wouldn't have been able to make it through the last year if it wasn't for him. And I salute you, sir. He did haze me. Let me just say that. For those of you who think he's being easy on me, not so. It's the opposite. But he's made sure that I was fit and ready to function 
and that I was prepared and that I was learning. He didn't let me come to him without some type of solution, something that I've read, something that I've done. And thank you for keeping the standard of excellence, sir, to my family, to the Ebenezer family, to my cousin Connie, to the community, to Daryl Walker, my fiance. Oh. Y'all stand by my side through everything. I tell DJ when we were getting ready to come, I said, DJ, I'm nervous. I said, but thank you for coming with me. He said, I'm going to always come with you. And that just means the world to me. You're so special. I love you with my whole heart, and I love both of you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, I have acknowledged Ms. Johnson down here, but I had to do that in the beginning because everything you saw here is what she taught us to do. So. Thank you. So now back to the pastor, the leadership of this church, to the members of the committee, to all of the guests and friends present, I greet you. Thank you for inviting me to spend this time with you. To those, all of those who took the time to be here today, I greet you in love. I greet you in peace. And I greet you in grace. Much grace. The grace that grace being that unmerited favor and love that is undeserved and unmerited. Grace being that power that carries us when we are weak and the love that lifts us from every dark, low, and dry place. Grace that brings hope to the hopeless and gives sight to the blind. God's grace is truly sufficient. It's truly sufficient. I also greet you in the name of and faith of our ancestors and the hope of our unborn children. May both forever remain in our hearts and minds as we take our ordained places in this continued fight for the liberation of African people in this American soil. Y'all might as well loosen up. Because we black black in here today. And it's okay. All right, it's okay. For over a hundred years, we have celebrated the issuance of the Emancipation Proclamation, which freed our enslaved ancestors in Confederate states. Since emancipation, our people have fought, bled, and died in the pursuit of life, liberty, and rights. We built during Reconstruction, but the fight continued because Jim Crow claimed, came quickly with the vengeance. Yet, we stood and endured. We built schools and universities and churches to educate ourselves. We built churches to create our own denominations, which became our sanctuaries for our development and advancement in the midst of another iteration of systemic oppression. We fought in wars and came home to lynchings. We migrated all over this country in pursuit of better, only to find oppression and opposition in every corner. Right. Yet we endure. Everybody say endure. Endure. Endurance is something special that comes from that grace that I was mentioning earlier. We endure despite the separate and unequal conditions. We fought for civil rights on this very soil and won, but did we win our freedom? Everybody say freedom. freedom. All of the fights and movements for civil rights and human rights at their core leads to one desired end, freedom. And brothers and sisters, I ask the question today, are we really Free. I did not come to play, and I keep telling people, don't put me on your program. Don't put me on the program. Because I'm not here to pretend. We are in a state of emergency, and it's not time to pretend. Am I wrong? Can I get an amen from the back? Thank you. I'll take you from the back. I'll take you from the back. I ask this question from an African-centered perspective, where we measure the result by the state of the collective and not the individual. Because some individuals think they're free. Some of you may think that I think of them. I don't. I am fighting the slavery in my mind 
and practices and mentalities that oppress me every single day. Amen. Because with all of the opportunities and advantages that I have, there are a lot of mindsets that still linger. Amen. Even in me. And y'all are going to hear me say that a lot. You're going to hear me starting with myself first. Because I'm going to get to the charge now that's coming at the end. What I'm going to ask, there's going to be action steps from this, all right? We're in the back. Go ahead and do it. Okay, so I'm raised Baptist. There's a charge that you ask people to do at the end. And I'm going to go on and tell you now so you can get yourselves ready for it. I'm going to ask you to deal with you. Hello. of the collective over the individual, I guess I should rephrase the question. Have we as African people on American soil ever known true freedom? I was born in 1975 and therefore I'm an integration baby. My generation has had more opportunities afforded to us than any other generation. We've accomplished a lot, but as I look at the state of our country, All right of our state, and of our community, I am grieved. I'm grieved more now than I was a year ago, and I'll get to that in a moment. My mind goes to the greeting of the Maasai tribe in Kenya, which asks the question, and how are the children? Everybody say that for me. And how, and how are the children? Say it one more time. And how are the children? The answer from that tribe is, in a healthy community, mm -hmm. is the response is the children are well. So someone would greet you. This is the greeting of that tribe. And how are the children? And someone would say the children are well. And how are the children? The children are well. And how are the children? The children are well. Can we truly say that no. today? See, in this tribe, the health and prosperity of the tribe was determined by the state of its children. And in this tradition, Selma, I ask you today, and how are the children? And I submit to you that the children are not well. And we're not going to fail. We're not going to front. We're not going to just have programs and go through all of these changes and pretend that we are somewhere that we are not. I am here to have an honest conversation. Our children are not well. And if the children are not well, then are we really free? If the children are not well, where will we be in 10 years, 15 years? while we're going about celebrating with our fantastic programs and our wonderful suits and our great speech. How are the children, not your children, all of the children, because remember, we're dealing with the collective and not just the individual. So I'm not just talking about these kids right here. I'm talking about the whole. I'm talking about the ones that never made it into your leadership program. The ones that don't show up. Street, or you know how 
I am. <laughs> Don't fret. Let's keep it the book. As the kids say. No cap. As the kids say. But if it was just the parent's fault, and I'm not absolving parents of anything, because I understand that that's the root. But why can you have other communities where there is a healthy community, and even if children come from unhealthy families, they can still thrive? That debunks that theory, and I'm willing to debate it publicly with anybody. How is it that we can have children from unhealthy families, but in thriving communities still thrive if it's only the parents? Because it's so easy to point the finger at them over there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's their problem. You know, yeah. they always do that. Oh, they just, they, 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 it ain't no they. Yeah. It is me. Yeah. It starts with me and it starts with each and every one of us. And if y'all think these elected officials, including me, are going to solve your problems, Mayor, and my apologies, Judge, I understand. They don't love me anyway. They got to do it. So I don't you know. I've been like this. They raised me like this. So let me just say, they're not surprised at how I am. They raised me like this. But if you think these elected officials wouldn't itself and start relying on the government to solve problems. That's not how y'all raised me. So I'm submitting back to you what you all have put into me. It was never the government or the elected officials. Everything came from the grassroots and from the people. The people moved the leaders. Where is our outrage from the desk? Where is our outrage? I have been in office for one year only. And I have had one child only that is on reading and math grade level right. in my entire juvenile court. Come on, come on, come on, come on, with, come on. One. Come on with, come on. I have juvenile dockets twice a month. And I ask, don't bring me a report card. And I understand there are a lot of people that might be frustrated because I'm asking people to do some things differently. You can't just bring me a report card in court anymore. Why? Because I know that Selma High has a 91% graduation rate with a 7% proficiency rate in reading and a 13, 14% proficiency rate in math. So what is the report card going to tell me? adults to do more work. But how can I make a decision in the best interest of a child if I don't know that information? If a child is getting molested, getting beat in the morning and has no food, how do you expect that child to come in school and read? Joy today, because this is the way I was trained. This is how I got here. I didn't get five people to repeat the emancipation with me. I had to memorize the whole thing by myself, stand up there at Tabernacle with that mic, scared as the dickens, and say it. Our kids can't read, they can't write. Parents don't know how to teach them to do it. If you are depending, and I'm not saying I love, we have two exciting, innovative new superintendents that are leading us in a new direction, so I want to give it up for them. Because the same thing I'm saying here, and those of you that know me, know me very well, I'm saying the same thing over there. I don't pull no punches. I'm going to say what it is. And I'm willing to debate anybody publicly that's telling me I'm lying. Because I got receipts. All of us have receipts. The kids are violent because the adults are violent. You might not be violent with guns. Oh, but you're violent. 
violent with your energy. You're violent with your words. You're violent with your intent and your motives. We're evil and corrupt. Jealous and hateful. Mean and nasty. I mean, you expect a child to automatically grow up and know how to resolve conflict when we can't resolve it?
choose to be this only for your children? Or are we going to look at every single child in this community as a child of the community? Amen. All right. Even the one with the family that's been in DHR for three or four years. Even the one with the mama that act a fool. Even the one. Yes. Because you know what? You don't understand people's story. That's right. That's right. You might be dead if you had been in that situation. Come on now. Come on now. We have generation, four and five generation of unaddressed trauma that prevent us from being our best selves. Dr. Joy DeGroy has a book called Post Traumatic Slave Syndrome. Yes, right. Beautiful book. Yes. She talks about the effect that white supremacy and slavery has had on us as a community. Right. <laughs> and the way the world looks right now, especially after January 6th, I would submit that white supremacy has had an effect on all of us. Because <laughs> they question our way more than we are. Well, you know, I understand. I might not, I get it. Y'all don't get what you get with me. I don't know what to tell you. What do we do? We think that because we're not in physical chains with the way we think, act, and move, that we're not still enslaved. When you can't get along at home, when families are in turmoil and dispute, we are still dealing with the effects of this, y'all, in their books about it. And until we acknowledge that there are some more chains that need to be broken, and some more chains that God is intended to break, because the chain breaker is still the chain breaker. That cross is still the same cross, and his power is not sleep. He's not sleeping, his power is not weak. Today to say that there's time for a new movement itself. Every generation has to answer their call. Every generation has to answer their call. Now, my generation's call might not look like your generation's call, but there is a call for liberation of African people in this American soil today. But instead of us always looking to them, the movement that I want to see is everybody creating a culture of looking at me. Amen. What happens if every person in this city just dealt with one person? Themselves. Do you understand that half the problems that we have would? But we can only see other people. We can't see ourselves. And friends, that is demonic. <laughs> it's called pride. It's called ego. And the word of God says pride comes before destruction. You have to call it what it is. And I bind it in the name of Jesus. Take authority over the spirit of pride, over ego. Over all of the demonic forces, the powers and principalities that are holding us in oppression. Not to declare that a new day is here. And a new day is coming. You don't have to be perfect. Because that's what we do. We say, oh, look at her. She did. Well, let me tell y'all, I mess up before I generally get stuff right. So I didn't let y'all put me up on the pedestal. Not going to do it. Because God didn't tell me my standard was perfection. God told me my standard is grace and excellence. And if I be excellent at nothing else but getting up when I fall down, you can be excellent at that. Yes. You can be excellent at starting again. Yes. You can be excellent at examining yourself and repenting. And God will take that broken place yes. and build you up and raise you up. But can we be broken? How much is it going to take for us to fall on our faces and say, Lord, help. Lord, I don't know the way. Lord, I don't have the answers. It's not going to hurt you. That doesn't mean you're weak to not have the answers. It means you're broken and humble. But I serve a God that does. And when we lower ourselves, I'm a living witness. He'll raise you up. And he'll raise you up in a different kind. Yeah. 
change in your neighbor. So what do we need? I want to make the case for change, but I've gone on too long preaching. We need vision. Without vision, the people perish. What do we see? I tell people when I meet with them, I met with the, uh, uh, Mr. Hanna the, over the detention center. I said, dream. I said, if you had all the money in the world, how would you reimagine this detention center being? I said the same thing to several people that I've gone around to. And what I'm realizing is it takes courage to dream. dream. Because all we see is barriers and we don't have the money. I don't care whether we have the money. What I'm telling you is if you can see it, God will supply it. Now tell me about what we don't have. Sam was a red man praying. People are ready to give money into us. But what can we see? All right. What can we build and what can we execute? Do we have the courage to reimagine what justice looks like? Justice is a much larger conversation than in the courtroom. Right. Justice is do, do these children have food? Right. Justice is has their mother healed from the abuse that she has gone through for five years, or is she gonna be cast away if she never got healed and judged because of where she is right now? And sometimes, y'all, you gotta take blows and take L's. I've been disrespected more than last year, and I bought at least five people that I wanted to slap. <laughs> Everybody else himself. I'm just as ignorant and foolish. I don't know what to tell you. It's the truth. But I gotta take the hill. I gotta let you disrespect me sometimes. Because you can't disrespect me if I'm dependent on him and not me. That's my what? Ego. And when y'all, and as a side note, when y'all see me get in the ego, because I'm not promising it won't happen, say, Vernetta, come on back. Because you know what? None of us are going to get it right all the time. I'm just ready for the culture to shift. What this becomes what we do. Everybody's in the game. It's like going to the gym. Let's practice it. Let's practice it. We need humility. We need healing. Amen. Now, this is a whole other speech. Because... What we don't talk about is when all that stuff I went through earlier from coming out of Reconstruction to Jim Crow, then living through the 20s, 30s, and 40s, then coming through the city. We don't talk about what that was like actually on families. We actually look at that like that's something just out of the history books that we read in a chapter. Do you know how it feels to go home and you don't know when the cat... I, my mama used to tell me this. How many of y'all remember when the KKK used to ride through y'all neighborhoods around here just to harass y'all a little bit? Oh, Who is going to therapy for that? Let's not pretend like that's not traumatic. It is traumatic. You all have lived through trauma. What happens when you're a man and you have to bend down and shine somebody's shoes and your woman looking at you and you come home and then now you're not feeling like a man so you beat your woman and then she feels this way and she beating the kid. Four and five generations, y'all, of the effect that this thing has had on us and we don't even talk about it. Who? What people could survive what we survived? And y'all think we're not affected? It's affected in every single family that is from this soil. Because you've had to live through it. Seeing that is traumatizing. We don't even have therapeutic language. We think something's wrong with us trying to heal. Oh, but the devil is a liar. Because he's a healer. Amen. I need equipped therapists to help us. And pastors, I love y'all, y'all need it too. Because there ain't nothing wrong with an expert. It's a level of arrogance that think because you're an expert.
expert at this, you expert at that. I can't be an expert at, 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 at doing this over here. I'm an expert at what? I do. I can't be an expert at being a doctor. I don't know about that. I'm an expert at this over here, so why would I try to diagnose my own self? I'm not an expert at that. And why would you go, try to come to court by yourself? You need a lawyer. But I'm just saying. But we've never had a space to talk about it. How many of you can count the trauma in your family? How many of you have sat with your mothers and your elders and listened to their stories of what they... No, they were told to shut up and gut it out. We survived. We've been in survival mode for a hundred years. But I see. I have a dream. I'm dreaming because I see healthy. I see whole. I see healing. I know it looks impossible. But there was a prophet in the Bible where the end, I'm about to close out, where the enemy was encroaching upon them and his, his assistant went out and kept looking like, man, they coming, they coming. He was like, no, 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 we good. He's like, no, they coming, they coming. He said, God, open his eyes that he can see. He went back out and looked up again and he said, oh my God. Many more are there for us than against us. Where sin does abound, grace does even more abound if you read the gospel. So when I tell you that there is hope, the host of heavens are waiting on us to activate them. And I say, today is the day. I activated in you. I activated in you. I activated in your wonderful, amazing, brilliant daughters and your children. I activated in you, young people. I activated in each and every one of you. May a fire be birthed in you. A fire and a hunger for healing and change. Not chaos and confusion. Don't be feel like you don't qualify. Nobody qualifies. Oh, have sin, contrary to what the self-righteous people make you feel. Oh, have. Everybody in this community is so. But God's going to take the least of these and raise us up again. Selma has another date with destiny. And it's going to start in each and every one of you, especially the young people. They are a mighty army. They're just looking for words of life to be spoken into them. But we can't speak words of life into them with any level of anointing until we speak it in ourselves. Be the change you want to see. Everybody say that with me. Be the change you want to see. One more time. Be the change you want to see. To see one more time. Be the change you want to see. I know you have trauma. I know you have issues. I do too. It takes a lot of courage to look in the mirror and deal with yourself. But I anoint you and I speak life over you to be the change you want to see. Oh, freedom. Oh.